So we are at Diamond Head and uh, we're about to start hiking up and around. And uh, there's a virtual cache here, which is cool, but uh, I mean, it's no real cache, so that's fine. Anyways, Charlie's waiting in line to uh, to get parking, and uh, the parking line seems to be going pretty well. So uh, let's go inside. Just like the street lights lit this town, like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down. Can't be afraid to leave this out. We got this far, don't know. already hiked up Diamond Head and uh, we're on our way to the Polynesian Culture Center again for day two. Uh, we've already missed the uh, welcoming ceremony so we figure we're gonna take our time on the way over. So now we're at um, Original Park to see Chinaman's Hat which you can see in the background and then we're probably gonna make maybe one or two more stops on the way over uh, to the Polynesian Culture Center and uh, we'll be working our way through the activities over there today. But uh, for now we're just enjoying the beach and the beach on this side of the island's really nice. The sand is really soft and the waves are really easy um, and the water is quite warm. So um, the only unfortunate part is there's actually a sign staked over there that says uh, that there were high levels of bacteria found in the water recently. Uh, so they do not suggest uh, standing or swimming in the water itself because it can cause illness. So uh, yeah, not, not too many people in the water because of that. and. Uh, it's uh, mainly just pictures right now, so uh, we'll touch base back when uh, when we're at our next stop. All right, and so this is our last night in Hawaii, Oahu. It was quite a packed day, actually. I think waking up quite early to go to Diamond Head, mm -hmm. doing that in like an hour and a half. Yeah, it's uh, it's suggested to give it two hours for like a leisurely stroll and then like an hour and a half for like a decent amount of like breaks or whatnot. Um, getting... You kind of just powered through it. Yeah, I was about to say, getting there was actually not too hard. I think just with having Coco Head and Lulu Mahu Falls behind us, like the focus of getting to the top is still there. <laughs> Because, like, yeah. Coco Head, that's literally the only thing keeping you going, is just yeah. get to the top, just get to the top. And then Lulu Mahu is just get past to the falls, get past this to the falls. Yeah. It's just, like, it's that whole um, mentality, mile, mile and a half, just mile, mile and a half more, you know? And so, like, um, that with that mentality, when you're, when you're walking up Diamond Head, it's all paved. It's not... Yeah, it was simple. Yeah, it's, it's like, not... Didn't really very... need that many rest if any at all maybe once or twice we rest ra rather yeah. than like the like every 12 steps on <laughs> yeah, Cocoa Head. Head. Yeah. Um, no we actually um so it's funny because we read a lot of guides on how to do Diamond Head since it's like the most popular one and a lot of them are just like oh it's not paved all the way it's this and that it's so like it is paved all the way just not evenly so mm -hmm. they paved it so that it's 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 still uneven but it's not going to be muddy if it rains yeah it's like just they carved it out of the mountain really yeah it's carved out of the rock of the mountain so, so it's not like it's supposed to be yeah, like it's paved. not dirt but, yeah but you can still see like places where they like they carved it out of the mountain they covered it up a little bit so that it wouldn't be super slick if you were climbing it while it rained it's still gonna be a little slick i mean there's no such thing as a non-slip surface for a hike but um it was paved the whole way it had handrails for i'd say 70 percent of it 
Mm -hmm. um, or at least some sort of guidance. There's some narrow stairways, but not nearly as narrow as some people made it seem. Like, I mean, anyone can do it. Yeah, it's, I would also go with the fact that, like, it was created for the army to do an outlook over Oahu during World War II, so it wasn't like it was a, it wasn't really a hiking trail at the beginning. It was more made for the military to go up and get, yeah. like, troops up there, guns up there, and stuff like that. Meant to be like utilized that. effectively, yeah, so it's so. like, yeah, so it's, it's a pretty simple hike. It took us about... I yeah. would say an hour to get up there, maybe a little less. We took a lot of time. Yeah, or at it was least about I, 40 minutes, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think, I'm pretty sure when I checked, so we started at 9.15, we got there almost at 10.55 exactly, to the top. 9.15 to 10.55? Or, I'm sorry, 9.55. 9.15 oh. to 9.55 yeah. almost exactly, so, so yeah, it was about 40 minutes, and, and it was really, um, the, the hardest part about it was navigating through traffic. It's super popular yeah like, the parking was a pain mm -hmm. and we, had then, to, we had to pay to wait in line <laughs> yeah that's five bucks every <laughs> right <laughs> uh but and uh, then we went to kono's real quick or to back grab, to kono's to grab breakfast, to grab breakfast. To go. Mm -hmm. and then pretty much while we were there we realized that we were kind of running behind for getting to the what was it, Tongas? Uh, Samoa. It Samoa, Samoa, Samoa has, has a special opening. Yeah, like has a welcoming ceremony if you're there at 12 at the Polynesian Culture Center. And by this time it was already 11, 15, 11, 20 ish by the time we had gotten our food. And it takes exactly one hour to get to the Polynesian Culture Center. So when I looked at that, I was like, okay, there's no reason to rush then if that's the case. Because the next thing we had planned was at like one o'clock almost. So I was like, okay, well, I mean, that sucks that we get to... I mean, we could have just here. eaten at Kono's, but rather than that, we just took off. I mean, it wasn't like we were going to stop going, so... Yeah. Um, we just went, and there were places we wanted to stop along the way anyways, mm -hmm. so we might as well just stop there. Yeah. So we were able to go see as, you know... Chinaman's earlier, hat. Yeah, earlier film, Chinaman's hat, and we found a swing for Lynn to swing on by the ocean. Yeah. That was something that I wanted to do. There are a lot of swings dotted along uh, the North Shore mm -hmm. coast. So if you just pull over to one of them, essentially, you can just sit on it as long as it's not on private property. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it was really here. easy, too. There's a lot of parking areas for you to mm -hmm. just stop at. And mm -hmm. so then we got to the PCC mm -hmm. and kind of just did all the activities that we wanted to do. Tried freshly grounded poi. Um, got tattoos. Yeah, we got tattoos. <laughs> we uh, did we, the stamp rally. Yeah, we wove uh, the, some fish. Yeah. We, um, we were able to... Oh, we made oh, some necklaces. Yeah, the like the fishing hook Necklace, necklaces. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, and then uh, we got to try some of the activities. So we went fishing. We uh, did some, like... I did the, uh, like, the beat, like, Maori balls or whatever. The ones that they're balls attached at the end of a string uh, and yeah. they were initially intended to train warriors but then they kind of made it kind of like a dance game out of it and so they use it to keep the beat to music and they use yeah, it because it just, sounds like drums yeah and and they also use it to just play around with it's kind of uh, like a little we challenge threw spears yeah we threw spears um gosh a canoe ride we did, yeah, we did a lot of really cool stuff. We did, so. like, a majority, if not all, of the activities we wanted to do. Or oh, and we actually it. saw the uh, the canoe pageant from a better Much spot. better, yeah, from a much better angle. So, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, so it was, it was really fun. Um, today, was, like, yesterday was all about, like, learning what was available and learning about the cultures around everything. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, today, like... The PCC is definitely a two-day thing, at minimum. Like, if you have kids or if you have, like, older people who are trying to keep up, it's probably going to be three days, I okay. would say. Yeah, you know, sure. like, it's it's just very possible. If you want to do, like, all of the available um, activities and all of the uh, cultural presentations. Like, mm. there was an extra island that it's, it's actually not an island, but it's the, um, it's the, uh, nautical navigation system oh, right. they actually have their own cultural presentation they have like a kind of a mini tour of a boat that was created 
using like the schematics of what they had of the old days. So it was yeah, very much so trying to keep the culture alive. Yeah, like so this place that is, was really cool. Yeah, this place is really awesome. Like um, one thing that I thought was really fascinating for sure was the fact that in uh, 1976 ish, I think to prove scientists and archaeologists and stuff wrong, um, Polynesians got together and made a nautical society and actually created these canoes mm. from like using the same schematics that were passed down orally like these ideas that were passed on orally and with a ton of research they were able to make the same exact canoes that their ancestors made and they were able to travel I think over a thousand miles and they were able to they oh, spent two months or right, three months right. on the sea and they survived they navigated they were able to do everything to prove that yeah they were able to travel throughout the islands just mm. fine without like modern technology so ever since that in the 70s they've really like amped it up like that society has grown um that particular part of their culture is really really ingrained um it's like i said it's, it's growing like the interest in it is growing and so it's really cool to see that and then when we talk to people we uh we found out you know like a lot of the workers are like actually from samoa or tahiti or tonga they're actually from the areas respectively um, they may not work in that specific area for that day, but they do rotate because yeah, they're all that was they, cool. yeah they all learn of each other's cultures. They're very similar in culture. Uh, they have you know obviously their differences, um, but one thing I noticed they all speak Hawaiian. Like oh, yeah, it's, I'm I mean, them too it's, at the very it's least. either Hawaiian or or their own like, native Tongan language. Or, yeah, yeah exactly. like, they all spoke a different language. If they needed to communicate to each other, like in a crowd, they would just holler to each other in some other language, and it was yeah. very obvious that was, uh, some some of them yeah. you could tell was a second language, but others it was definitely like a native tongue for them. Yep. So it was really really cool. Um, definitely <laughs> a a guaranteed like you have to go here for me. Yeah, and then we uh, finished up the night. We were going to go to Helena's, but we actually ran late because we saw the movie at the PCC about Hawaii, um, which which kind of ran us over time because mm -hmm. Helena's closes at 7.30. So yeah, we did not realize that. <laughs> yeah, we changed it out and went to Itchy Butt instead, um, which is Korean fried chicken KFC and it was yeah it was delicious super good um there's only like one place in San Francisco that we know of that has really good Korean wings and even then now yeah. when, whenever we order it, it's hit or miss which sucks it's not nearly as consistent as it used to be we just need to do a little bit more exploring I'm sure yeah. we can find something I know there's a good place in Hayward but anyhow. yeah but here yeah no this KFC seems to be something that's pretty common and Itchy yeah. Butt was one that was just suggested through different local research so a lot of people had said like oh try this place and it's pretty pretty darn good and it's a decent deal yeah it's no it's it's not bad 13 bucks for half a chicken yeah that's pretty good so, and it came with time. uh yeah it came with pickled, pickled radishes radish. as well as three fried like cheese, cheese sticks? sticks like yeah. mozzarella mm -hmm. fried mozzarella cheese sticks which and was nice drink. yeah and a drink so I mean, pretty legit. Hard to believe one person can eat all that. You know, like it's, it's <laughs> with one drink that uh, comes with. It's kind of, I guess it's expected one. You don't person. know my life. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it was really good. And mm. with that, that's gonna conclude our last night here in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and then tomorrow's pretty to, ambitious too. Yeah, tomorrow we'll see what happens. We're, we're planning on waking up early and trying to go to a museum before returning the car. The only thing is is that there's three major items that I, I need to do. One is uh, the car return. <laughs> While we do, or when we do that, I have to claim that we got hit because we were in an accident while we are over here. Literally the first day. Yeah, so I don't know how long that's going to take. And then, two, because of the government shutdown, I don't know how long it's going to take us to get through TSA or if that's going to be a problem or not at the airport. Yeah. And three, which leads us to the whole, I don't understand the timing of everything. And I also need to fill the car with gas because we went from Honolulu to North Shore, North Shore yesterday and today. So now we're at less than half a tank of gas, which means I have to fill gas. 
And so that's it's pretty ambitious. Our flight's at like two o'clock. Two o'clock, yeah. So we have to so be So boarding's probably at about one thirty. Yeah. Which means we should really be at the airport, at the airport by no later than noon. Yeah. Something like it. But so. um yeah, no, tomorrow we're gonna try to the only thing we missed at Pearl Harbor was the Bowfin. And that was just because we wanted to sleep more. Um, and so... Oh, well, it was raining. Yeah, I mean, so, it's a submarine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, either way, it's uh, it was pretty uh, ambitious to really set it up, but we're going to try and do that and do Helena's, because Helena's oh. opens at 10, and Helena's was yeah. like the number one thing that was suggested as far as food, besides picking the lady. And the unfortunate part was that Helena's was actually closed for the holiday, which makes sense, up until yesterday. Mm -hmm. So we had yesterday and to, no, today and tomorrow, I'm sorry. So the first day open was today and then tomorrow. Oh. So there was only two, there's only two opportunities for us to eat it. And I thought, okay, maybe for sure we'll be able to have it for dinner today, but no such luck. So mm -hmm. I didn't realize that they closed at 7.30. I thought they closed at like 8.30ish, but. Or 10, you know. I mean. Yeah, would have been nice. Them, yeah. <laughs> but, but anyhow. Yeah, so, so we're going to try and do the bowfin before 10 o'clock. And so we need to give ourselves like an hour and a half, two hours for that. Bowfin? Yeah, the bowfin. Oh. Oh, you mean, yeah, I we got need you. To first so we're going to try to do it at 8. Yeah, cause we're going to, yeah. Cause I'm not used to telling, listening to people tell me when we're trying to do it before. Yeah. We're so trying then, to give ourselves at least two hours there. But we'll figure it out tomorrow. I yeah. mean, we've got to get packing, so... That'll uh, that'll do it for us tonight. Yep. All right. We'll cool. check in tomorrow. Yep. Peace. Bye. So this place is called Soda Bomb, and they mix different sodas together, and it's really really freaking good. Charlie and I got the. Uh, Aloha Spirit and Broke the Mouth and uh, let's see what they are. Aloha Spirit's Mountain Dew, Blue Caraco, uh, Coconut and Passion Fruit and then Broke the Mouth is uh, Mist Twist, Blood Orange, Cherry Strawberry and Watermelon and Broke the Mouth is really good but so is Aloha Spirit. Let's see here. Well it looks like Broke the Mouth. Yep that's Broke the Mouth. Oh, that's Aloha Spirit. This is Aloha Spirit? Yep. Really nice, really refreshing. But let's try this one. Damn. This is like a fruit roll up. Yeah. This, Holy crap. This is good. I just, I'm not so fond of the, the coconut flavor. Mm -hmm. this. And then um, this one. That one just tastes like a straight up fruit roll up. Yeah. This, this one's amazing. But anyhow, time to go get dinner. Yep. Peace.